Nope, not United Methodist Church. My microphone was turned off, and then I just outed myself to everybody online. Uh, welcome to Glenville Methodist Church. My name is David. I'm the pastor. It's so good to see each and every one of you here today. Um, I want to say a special welcome to those watching online. I saw where Mr. Jerome Sheffield was watching, and I also saw Teresa Banks was watching. So welcome to those of you joining us online. This morning is going to be a great morning of worship, but before we get started, Ms. Phyllis, our lay leader, she has a few announcements. What's going on, Ms. Phyllis? Yep. So, okay. This evening we are going to be um, the youth will be meeting at five here. So, um, any special announcements that you know of? Oh yeah, let me see. It's going to be a delicious evening. It is Youth Wild Camouflage Night. Greg Woolard is sharing his once in a lifetime Alaskan hunt and great and a great devotion. So, Kim Woolard is cooking rabbit, duck, and cube deer steak. So, uh, join us for Youth Wear Your Wild uh, Camo at 5 p.m. tonight, and there'll be pizza for wimps who don't want to eat that food. So uh, that would be Brandy. Brandy doesn't like any kind of wild game. So, uh, yeah, there'll be pizza, too. So coming out to youth at 5, wear your camo. And that's good that they have an alternative food. Okay, so um, Wednesday we're also going to have the extra hours for um, children on the playground. That starts at 5 o'clock, and that will be followed by prime time at 6 o'clock. And there's um, a sign-up sheet in your bulletin if you want to sign up and let us know that you're coming. And then the adult um, choir practice will be at 7 that same night. We also um, have our thrift store that was closed this past Saturday, but it is going to be opening soon. So watch the vessel and the sign that's in front of it for that date. And um, this month is Pastor Appreciation Month. And um, we just want to show our love to Brother David and his family this month. So it will be going on the whole month of October. All right, and this morning we have a great morning of worship plan. Um, we are going to be continuing on in our series called James, um, A Lived Faith. I'm excited to share with you about that. Um, we don't have the screen this week, but inside of your bulletin is going to be the actual scripture passage, so you can follow along in a place for you to take notes. So I'll invite you to pull that out a little later during the service. And then after the sermon, this isn't like a, a little after snack. No, when we celebrate communion, it is the pinnacle of worship where we celebrate God being here in our midst and remember his mighty acts through Jesus Christ. And I'm very honored to share communion, share a message, and share just some space with you this morning as we get ready to start our week. Ms. Phyllis, would you open us up in prayer? Yes. Let us pray. Father, we come inside this comfortable place where your spirit is present. And we welcome you into our hearts and into our minds and into our souls, Father. Thank you for sending your son, Jesus, to die on that cross for us so that we can have special relationship with you. Thank you for hearing us, Father. When we reach out to you with things that are going on in our lives, Lord, help us to open our ears and hearts and hear you hear the message that you have for each one of us and Lord as we come today I ask you to be with brother David as he brings the message father just hide him behind the cross help each one of us to know how much you love us more today than we knew you loved us yesterday Lord I ask you to be with brother David and his family and bless them abundantly thank you for sending them to us to lead us and to guide us. Lord, we ask you to show your favor upon them and give them help and strength and guidance and peace and humbleness in everything that they need in order to serve better. Lord, just help us to be the people that hold their hand and journey on this road together so that we can bring others to Christ. Lord, we love you, and we come asking all of this in thy precious holy name, Jesus' name, amen. Amen. 
Well, as Christians, we sing our faith, and like I said, the screen will not come down today, so you need to grab the hymnal in front of you. It may be red, it may be black, it may be like a dark blue, but it's this hymnal. We're going to sing 354. We're going to sing verses 1, 2, 4, and 5. That's verses 1, 2, 4, and 5 of I Surrender All. Would you please stand? you want to flip forward in your hymnals to 881, that is the Apostles' Creed. Um, it's not going to be up on the screen, so it's in your hymnal on 881. We say this every week as a way to remember who we are and whose we are. It's something that Christians for over a thousand years have recited as the basic essentials of our faith. Would you please join me in this historic confession? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence she shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated, and the children may come forward now for our children's moment. Yeah, you can, you can hold it for a second. Well, 
I want to remind y'all that this Sunday is First Sunday, and we call it Family First Sunday. So if you are in first grade and above, you are invited to stay in. The sermon's going to be a little bit shorter, and then you can celebrate communion with your family. So if you're in first grade and above in just a moment, you can go ahead and uh, stay in here after the children's sermon. All right, Luke has brought something to talk about. Come on up here, Luke. All right, show the kids. Ask them if they know what these are. What, what does it raise your? Wait, 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 raise your hand if you know what these are. What are they? Pokemon cards. Pokemon cards. How many of y'all know how to play Pokemon? Just show your hand. Have you ever played it or know how to play? It? How many of y'all out there know how to play Pokemon? <laughs> All right, a few of y'all do. Now, some of y'all who are my age, Pokemon was around when I was a kid. I never played it, so we don't know how to play Pokemon really at our house. Luke kind of makes up the rules as he goes along. But uh, sh show them what they are. They're playing cards, and each card has a character with different powers. And sometimes he'll beat me with certain powers, and then I'll turn around and try to use those powers again. And he'll say, no, that's not the way you do it. So I don't know if we know exactly <laughs> how to play it. All right, you can, you can grab a seat. Let me, let me talk about this a little bit. So here's the very little I know about Pokemon. And uh, let me just show you. There's different cards, okay? And on each card in the top corner right here, what is this supposed to be? Do you all know? What, what is that? It's the power for like the initial attack, okay? All right, and then like right here, this says devour soul, okay? This is appropriate for church, all right? Um, what is this right here? Yeah. The uh, type of attack, okay, all right. So you get to learn all these different things. And in Pokemon, I do know this, there's like the little phrase, you gotta catch them, um, catch them all. Yeah, you got to catch them all. So how many Pokemon are there total? Have y'all ever played the Pokemon mobile game? Have y'all ever seen that? All right, that went crazy. Maybe y'all remember that where everybody's walking around playing the Pokemon game on the phone. Does anybody remember that craze that happened? I was in Simmons, so that might have been 2015. So, uh, yeah, that became very popular. The idea is you want to get as many Pokemon as you can, and you get to learn their attacks, you get to learn their strategy, you get to learn their power so that you can use it when you come up to battle. It got me thinking, that's kind of the way the scriptures are. We get to learn the scriptures, so we get to learn the stories and the powers and the character, not just about the characters, but that God does through them. So think about this. In the Old Testament, there was a little boy who fought a giant. What was, what was his name? Yeah, Goliath is who he fought. Excellent. Okay. And then, all right, I got a little bit trickier one. Okay. There was a guy who came before Jesus, and he lived in the woods, and he ate locusts and honey. John the Baptist. Cool. Very good. All right. Y'all want to, okay, y'all ready for another one? Y'all think you got another one? Okay. There was a guy who went on the side of a mountain, and he saw a bush on fire, and he went to check it out, and the bush didn't burn up, but God talked to him through that. A little bit trickier one here. Anybody know who that was? Yeah, Moses. Okay. All right. Y'all want one more? All right. This guy built a really big boat. Noah's Ark, yeah, exactly. So in the same way you learn about Pokemon, you get to learn stories about God so that you can remember what God did through people, so that you can know when you face giants, when you face floods, when you face scary situations, you know how to respond because God's people have modeled it for us, okay? So when you think about Pokemon, anybody, does anybody have Pokemon cards besides Luke? Okay. All right, a lot of y'all had the Pokemon cards, but y'all don't necessarily, okay, your brother has Pokemon cards, maybe you don't. Um, in the same way that you collect the cards, we collect the stories of God because they're interesting, but also because they show us how to be prepared for God to use us in our lives. All right, All right let's do an echo prayer where I say a line and you say one, okay? Dear God, thank you for today. Thank you for loving us and sharing your stories with us. We love you. Amen. All right. I've got sweetest fish. My candy bowl that disappeared last week still has not returned. So if y'all know where that is. All right. If you are first grade, first grade and below, you can come on down. And if you're first grade and above, you can uh, stay in here, but I can still give you some candy. Ace of cake. Hey, Peter, Paul.
Well, as we get prepared to do our uh, morning time of prayer, if you're watching online and you have a, uh, a prayer request, you can put it in the chat. And if I remember to look down and see it, I will announce it to our room. Um, good morning, Miss Martell Brandon is watching. And uh, Haley Jones, good morning, y'all. Thank y'all for watching. If y'all have a prayer request, you can put it there. I do have a couple announcements before we get to our prayer request, though. The first one is I was just notified that there is, if you are in one of the adult Sunday school classes, don't go down there. I guess youth, too. Just the adult you know of will be meeting in the fellowship hall because of some construction that will be starting down there. Um, I guess I should announce that, too. We have a, is that okay for me to announce? Admin board chair, is that okay? Um, <clears throat> we, our administrative board approved a construction project. We are going to knock down some of the walls of the Sunday school classes and kind of reorganize them to create a bigger youth space. We have a, a problem that most churches in America would love to have right now. We don't have enough space for our youth. So um, on Wednesday nights, we're out in the playground, but when it's cold or when it's raining, we really don't have a space for them to run through. And our fellowship hall is starting to get a little dinged up from uh, all the wear and tear from um, youth on Sunday nights. And so we're gonna knock down some walls and make a big, a larger, wide open space. And we'll be telling you more about that project, but it's actually gonna start, I think Monday, tomorrow is what I believe. So. Um, I guess there might be some stuff already happening down there. So pr we praise God for that. We praise God about that project, and we'll have more information about that. But uh, that, that was my first announcement. My second announcement, and, and this is rolling into our prayer request, too, is, you know, we praise God that we have not been hit by the hurricane. As a matter of fact, it was just, you know, a whole lot of just wind for the most part, maybe some limbs down here. But the Fort Myers area was just absolutely demolished. Some of the islands in the Caribbean were um, torn apart. And so if you would like to make a gift for that, just mark it hurricane um, or hurricane relief if you want to make a gift for that. We don't pass our offering plates here. We have them here and in the back. And so if you want to put your offering there um, and make an extra gift, you can do that there too. So I uh, just wanted to let you know about that. And then our finance committee will decide. We're either going to send it to UMCOR, the United Methodist Committee on Relief, or a United Methodist Church that is right there that is resourcing people. So your gift will go directly to those in need. So just make, mark it hurricane or hurricane relief. All right, as we move into our time of prayer requests, I made some notes because there's a, a lot of uh, serious situations going on. We praise God for the storm that it was not um, as serious here, but we want to pray for all those who are hurting. Um, I saw over 30 people have died, and so a very sad situation. We want to pray for all those who are rebuilding. Also, uh, speaking of church things happening, uh, the nominations committee is meeting. This is the committee that elects the people to serve in leadership for the next year for the 2023 class of leadership. So as we start to make those decisions and call people, um, we just ask you to pray for our important work as we meet for several times over the next few weeks. And then I went and saw Miss Frankie Thompson in the hospital. A couple of y'all reached out to me. She's been living in Hinesville and worshiping in Hinesville, but she's still a member here and cares deeply about our church. And so I went and visited her in the hospital. Um, she's made it back home um, to her house in Hinesville and has some people taking care of her. But please continue to pray for her. Um, and then uh, Mr. Vic's mom, Miss Sarah Lynn, is in the hospital. And we want to pray for her and for Mr. Vic um, and his family during this time. With those prayer requests being lifted up to our body, what other names or situations do we want to be aware of this morning? Okay. Miss Jackie Thomas, if you didn't hear. Anybody else? Okay. I heard Pam Dasher, and then I heard somebody else over here. Continue to pray for. Miss Tiff Tootle, she's on our prayer list, and we'll be praying for her and her treatments. Okay, that was Mr. Lloyd. Um, tell me his, his Jones. Okay, he had a successful procedure this past Wednesday and is back home. Let me see online. I'm not seeing any prayer requests. So I invite you, if you're online and in person, to join me in prayer. I will lead us in a prayer out loud, and at the conclusion of my prayer, I invite you to pray the Lord's Prayer out loud with me. Let's pray.
Heavenly Father, on a week where we have seen um, destruction in the Caribbean and the panhandle of Florida, um, on that Gulf Coast, Lord, um, where we know that people have lost lives, where we saw that there was flooding in the Carolinas, Lord, um, we say thank you for your mercy and safety from the storms here in the Glenville area. But we also want to be mindful of those who lost loved ones in the storm, um, those who lost their houses, who lost their businesses, whose entire world has been picked up and thrown into chaos. So God, we pray for all those who need your touch. <clears throat> and God, we pray that you would lay on our heart ways to help, whether it's remembering these people in our prayers, whether it's making a gift that will go towards relief. Um, Lord, we just pray that um, we could somehow help shine your light even in the midst of the darkness. And God, we thank you for the churches in these areas that will be leaders in the restoration, um, helping resource people, helping point people in the right direction, but most importantly, God, offering your hope that even in the midst of despair, even in the chaos of the storms, you are there with them. <clears throat> God, we pray this morning for our friends who are sick or hurting, our family members who are in need of your touch. Um, we pray specifically for Miss Frankie Thompson, for Jackie Thomas, for Miss Sarah Lynn Flournoy, for Lloyd Jones, for Pam Dasher, and Tiff Tootle. Would you help us reach out and encourage them through a card or through our prayers or just a friendly word telling them that we are rooting for them and we are there with them no matter what they need. And God, we pray for those who are still struggling this week who have their doubts, who don't know if they have hope themselves. God, we pray for ourselves when we find ourselves in those moments. Help us as we start this week. Let us face the challenges ahead, knowing that we will not be alone. And God, most of all, we thank you for your son, Jesus Christ. We thank you for what you are doing, Jesus, through our church through our growing youth program, through our deepening spirituality, through our new members that are joining. God, we are so grateful for all that you are doing. So thank you. We pray this this morning in your son's name, and we pray the prayer that he taught his followers. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. himself. 
Thank you for that, Mary Ann. Well, if you have your Bibles, you can open up to James. We're going to be again towards the very back of your Bible. That's where you can find the, the letter James wrote to the early church. But if you don't have your Bible, I invite you, and even if you do have your Bible, I invite you to pull out of your bulletin. Um, there's a little uh, a sheet in here. It's purple or pink in most of your bulletins. And I'll have the verses on there. I'm going to ask you to read some of the verses out loud with me in just a moment. And then on the back, it's got a place for you to take notes in case there's anything you want to remember from the sermon. I'm going to give you three points a little later on, so you might want to write those down. And it's got some next steps for you to consider in there too. So I encourage you to keep that handy as we work our way through the sermon as I turn to the book of James. I saw an interesting study this past week. It was about dogs. And so any dog lovers in the house? Um, yeah, okay, we got some people who like dogs in here, so that's good. We know who's going to heaven now. No, I'm kidding. Every, it's not based on what you like. It's based on who you know. So, um, all right, so uh, yeah, it was an interesting study about dogs and stress levels. You might have even seen this in the news. I saw it was in the headlines. And it was they took a group of dogs, and they had them sniff people's either samples of their breath or their sweat. And then is what they did is so they had the control. They gave the people... Um, you know, hey, you're relaxed or whatever. We want to collect some sweat and some samples of your breath. And then they gave them very complicated math problems. And if you were a genius and it didn't stress you out to do the math problems, I guess they just threw all your stuff away. But they took your blood pressure too. And if you started to, I think it was noticeably perspire or your blood pressure went way up, they're like, okay, this person's stressed. And so they took where the uh, people were stressed, their samples, and where they weren't stressed. And they had four different dogs go through and sniff. And they were trained to smell if they were stressed out and so the dogs could tell now dogs can tell if you're kind of if you if you have some serious medical conditions you might have a dog who can tell you're about to have a seizure or you need to sit down and they'll nudge you to sit down but this was the first time they said the dogs can tell psychologically if you're stressed just based on the smell that you have now I don't know about you but sometimes I get really stressed out as a matter of fact um, David and Lucinda they join the church and David brings his dog Fiddler to church I, I think sometimes if Fiddler were to try to smell me if I stressed out he might just explode okay so I, I don't know if you ever feel stressed like that in your life but this past month was interesting it was the worst uh, stock market month since the pandemic and we see inflation is going out of control some of us have anxiety about what is happening in our life in our family some of us have uh, serious health challenges some of us have financial challenges some of us have seasonal affective disorder I, i'm so excited about um, the cooler weather coming but the older i get the more I, I i dislike when it gets dark earlier now when i was in high school and i played football i thought it was the coolest thing when time changed and you ran out to warm up and um, it was already dark and the friday night lights were on but as i get older i'm like man the day's ending already like i, I can't believe it. i didn't get enough done we all have things in our life that stress us out well, the good news today is that our God's brother, James, wrote us a letter. And he has something to say to us about stress, about how to have more peace in our life. And just as a fresher, refresher, James was somebody who doubted Jesus as Lord. He grew up with Jesus and didn't believe that he was actually God. And it wasn't until after Jesus died and was resurrected. He had a meeting with James, and James actually becomes a leader in the church. And he's going to talk to us about having peace. But James had to have peace in the midst of persecution. He actually died from his faith. We don't know if he was stoned or if he was thrown off the temple. There's a couple of stories in history, but we do know that he died for his faith. So when he tells the early church and when God speaks to us through these words today, it is not speaking lightly, but into a world that is challenging. So... If you have your Bibles or if you have that bulletin insert, follow along. This is James. If, if you were here last week, he talked about taming your tongue. He talked about people shouldn't become teachers because people were boasting and becoming leaders in the church who probably didn't belong in leadership in the church. He talked about how you need to watch your mouth and how it comes from your heart, and we reflected on that. And this is right after that. Verse 13. Who is wise and understanding among you? So he's asking, uh, this sounds like maybe he's just talking to the people who want to be teachers, but this definitely applied not just to the people who wanted to be teachers, but to the whole church. So who is wise and understanding among you? Let them show it by their good, what? 
life by deeds done in humility that comes from wisdom. So it'll look like a humble life because of their wisdom. Verse 14, but if you harbor bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not boast about it or deny the truth. And then he's going to tell us about where this wisdom comes from. Verse 15, such wisdom does not come down from heaven, but it is earthly, unspiritual, demonic. Verse 16, for where you have envy and selfish ambition, there you find disorder in every evil practice. Will you read that verse with me? One, two, three, go. For where you have envy and selfish ambition, there you find disorder in every evil practice. But the wisdom that comes from heaven is first of all pure, then peace-loving, considerate, submissive, full of mercy, good fruit, impartial, and sincere. So he has showed us a comparison or contrasting between these two types of wisdom. And then he concludes by saying this, Peacemakers who sow in peace reap a harvest of righteousness. Peacemakers who sow in peace reap a harvest of righteousness. Would you read that one with me too? One, two, three, go. Peacemakers who sow in peace reap a harvest of righteousness. And may God add his blessing to the reading of his word. So on this first Sunday sermon where I try to go a little bit shorter, I want to unpack something that is so powerful for each of our lives in Christ. And I want to do it. There's three reflections I have from this passage. And the first one is this. Godliness is greater than worldliness. Godliness is greater than worldliness. James is talking here about a humility, a humble lifestyle that comes from wisdom. And then he says in verse 15, he says this, such wisdom does not come down from heaven, but is, and then he has this list, earthly, unspiritual, and demonic. Now, in the Bible, when you have lists, they're not usually just listed out one, two, three, four, like however they come to their mind. They're listed in an ascending or descending order. So let's look at this. He says, um, earthly, unspiritual, and demonic. And so we would probably say that's ascending into good or descending into bad. Yeah, he's descending into bad. If you're going to be somebody who lives this life of godliness, of wisdom, then you just know that there are some things that will drag you down in a descending order. And he says the first one is this, is earthly. It's not thinking about the things of God, but being obsessed with the things here on this earth, on making as much money as you can, getting as much power as you can. Did anybody watch the Georgia game last night? All right, a few of y'all did. We should have had the stress dogs come around and smell y'all then during the Georgia game. If you didn't watch, Georgia was the, is the number one team. Um, I think they'll still be the number one team. But they were playing an unranked team, Missouri, and uh, they were down by 10 points. Was that the biggest deficit? No, I think it was 3 to 16, so maybe even 13 points at one point. And so they came back and won. Stetson, Benson did it. Stetson Bennett did it again, led them to a comeback. And uh, they're going to, I would hate to be at practice this week, so I'm sure it's not going to be easy practice with Coach Kirby uh, getting their rears in gear for the next opponent. There's something interesting I saw, though, at the end of the game as I'm falling asleep and waking up. And they put this graphic up there about uh, Stetson Bennett's great grandfather. Did y'all see this last night? All right. Did y'all know, who, who knew this already before they saw this? I didn't know this, okay? All right, they said Stetson Bennett's great-grandfather, he became a preacher, but what was he first? He was a moonshiner. Did y'all know that before the game? Now, we do have a, a family historian of the Bennett family here, but I don't see him in the congregation right now, so we'll ask Charlton about the whole family history. But, but the guy, the commentator, and, and y'all saw this, if you saw it, he said, how does somebody go from a moonshiner to a preacher? And the guy's like wondering out loud. It kind of blew me away. He's like, maybe he got arrested. Or, and he was trying to fathom, how can somebody go from something so worldly to become a preacher? 
And there's only one way that happens. Now, I'm sure there are people who say, I'm going to be a preacher and they're corrupt and they're snake oil salesmen. Like, that does happen. But in general, for somebody to go from some type of career like that into the pulpit in a time where you probably didn't get a lot of money to preach, there's only one way that happens. It's godliness being greater than worldliness. It is God interacting with the world. It changes us. It makes us do things that non-Christians or people who are not following Jesus say, why are you doing that? Why are you giving money to people who just had their houses knocked down from a hurricane? We still live in a hurricane area. We could get one ourselves. Maybe we should just save up our resources. Why do you tithe your first fruits to God? This godliness is greater than worldliness, and we submit to God because we know that leads to true life. And if we get focused on earthliness, we'll get dragged down into unspiritualness, and then we can find ourselves in the things that are flat-out demonic. We have choices to make every day. Are we going to follow the ways of God or follow the ways of this world? The world for godliness is also holiness. It means a life that is set apart to follow God. All right, so godliness is greater than worldliness. The second thing is this passage calls us to die to ourself. In verse 16, for where you have envy and selfish ambition, he says good things don't happen. There you find disorder and every evil practice. This was the part of the passage that I found most personally challenging for me. And we live in a world where you can put a video up and get thousands of likes or go viral and people will know who you are. People will know that, wow, this guy has a platform. This guy has a podcast. This guy has a blog. All things that I have. But I wonder, do I do it to serve the church or to build myself? This past week, I went to Bethesda Church in Guyton. They were Bethesda United Methodist Church. They've left the United Methodist Church, but they have not decided to join the Global Methodist Church. So they said, we want somebody who really knows about the Global Methodist Church to come. And so I guess Jay Hansen had a stomach ache or something because I got to go and be the speaker. And, man, I had a blast. They were asking me all these questions, and I was answering them. I I made a little handout for them. I told them how we joined and and what our story was. And uh, they said... uh, well, what's going to happen? Like, you know, we used to have this district superintendent kind of over a preacher. What if we have a, a, a problem with our preacher? Who, who do we talk to before we get in? And I said, I, you know, call me. I'll come and talk to you. And the, some old guy in the back said, we can tell you really like to talk. <laughs> so I, I don't know. We'll see if they join. My main goal is to elevate their, their uh, situation, but... Uh, There's going to be literally hundreds of churches, uh, maybe even thousands across the U.S. that are going to want people to come and and share with them. And part of me is like, man, I could be that guy. I'm a good salesman. But how much do I want to do that? How much do I want to leave tucking my kids in at night to go to another church that's not my church? How much am I doing it just for myself? How much am I doing it for my ego? John the Baptist, we talked about him during the children's sermon Uh, He was a guy who had people coming out to him in the woods. If anybody had the ability to build their own platform, to have their own preaching ministry, to travel all around the world, it was John the Baptist. People were coming out, and even probably after Jesus died, there were people who still tried to follow John the Baptist over Jesus. And when they came to follow John the Baptist, he said crazy things, and he taught followers, and Jesus taught his followers things like this in John 3.30, that Jesus must increase but I must decrease. The early church that James was writing to, every disorder, I love that phrase, came from envy and selfish ambition. I wonder, do you have any selfish ambition in you today? 
The third and the final point where we kind of move, and let me go ahead and tell you, we're going to be in John chapter 4, and sometimes the, the chapter breaks off perfectly and kind of summarizes the idea, but this whole idea of worldliness and godliness, we're going to be talking about it more. James is going to be talking about it more next week when we do our study there and we hear our message there. But to wrap up this little part, he moves into this thing where he talks about being a peacemaker. So my third and final point is this, be a peacemaker. We've talked about this several times. James was really influenced by the, the book of Proverbs. He probably said that early, studied that a lot. And the Gospels were probably not written at the time that James was writing this letter, but at least they were passing around, or, or he might have even heard himself, Jesus talk about the Beatitudes, um, the blessed are, and all the different things that he said. And, and so James would have been very familiar with that too and very influenced by that. And so he says this, he says, the wisdom that comes from heaven is pure, then peace-loving, considerate, submissive, full of mercy, good fruit, impartial, and sincere. And then he says this, peacemakers who sow in peace reap a harvest of righteousness. In the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 5, verse 9, we hear this, blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called the children of God. You see, we are called to be peacemakers. Hey, good morning, John. How are you doing? Come on in, grab a seat. God calls us to be peacemakers. God calls us to be people who exhibit that peace, that when if we're in the trial to see if dogs can really smell, they do, they'll do another round. Maybe they'll call and ask people from Glenville, do you want to participate? Our hope is that people don't smell our stress or see our stress. And our hope really is that they don't see our peace either. Our hope is that they see Christ through us. Our hope is in Jesus. You see, the only reason we can be peacemakers is because of what God has already done for us. It's because Jesus Christ came and he died for the imperfect parts of our life so that we can be restored into relationship with God. In just a moment when we celebrate Holy Communion, that's why we say celebrate because we're celebrating what God has already done. Yes, we are celebrating that God is present here with us, but the front of the altar says uh, something like, do this in remembrance of me. I'm kind of guessing exactly the right wording. What does it, what does it say? This do, okay, so I didn't have the uh, King James Version exactly. And so there is a remembrance part of what God has done uh, and celebrating that God is here with us also. Because if we are going to bring peace out into the world, if we are going to be pe bring peacemakers into our family, then we have to do it with God's help. If we are going to choose godliness over worldliness, we're going to do it with God's help. So on the back of your outline, it says your next steps today are this. Come and receive Holy Communion in just a moment. You can commit to praying daily to ask God for the wisdom that's talked about here in your life. And then I've got three different areas where you can ask God to help you to be a peacemaker, whether it's in your family, your work, or your church. God calls each of us to take our next step. Today, what is God calling you to do? Would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, as we prepare our hearts for Holy Communion, would you help us to hear of your amazing love for us, that we can be peacemakers, Lord, because we have a peace that surpasses all understanding, is a peace that we don't make up on our own but comes simply from you. God, help us to be peaceful people in our family and work in our church, and in the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, I'm going to invite you to open up your hymnals. Again, we don't have the words on the screen. So we are going to read through our communion liturgy as a way to prepare our hearts to receive the sacrament of Holy Communion. It's in page 12, page 12 of your hymnals. If you would, go ahead and turn there.
hear this invitation. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. I'll continue on with the great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup and he gave thanks to you. He gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and cup. Make them be for us the body and the blood of Christ that we may be for the world, the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your Holy Church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. I'll ask those who are assisting to please come forward. We'll be serving by intention, which means you will have a uh, piece of bread torn off and handed to you, and then you'll be offered the cup to dip in. We also have gluten-free elements, and also if you would like a uh, pre-wrapped element, you can uh, also have that. It's up here. Uh, Mr. Leon, will you help to to carry over to anybody in overflow? Now, we use hand sanitizer for your own benefit, but it doesn't matter how dirty or clean you are. Jesus simply says, come. 
you prayed that prayer of confession with integrity, you are welcome at God's table. You don't have to be a part of this church or any church in particular. Take that to the overflow. In just a moment, we'll invite you to come forward. The ushers will tell you when your row is ready, go down the outside, and you'll come here. You can spend some time at the altar, or when you get back to your seat, you can make the altar at your seat. Spend some time talking to the Lord there. And this, to me, is one of the most high and holy moments of the entire month for me to talk to God about what I'm excited about or nervous about or frustrated about, um, to remember this, is, to me, is a time between you and God, and I hope that you'll enjoy it, uh, take it seriously, and that God will speak to you now in this moment. Um, please come as you feel led. All right, our closing hymn is number 349, 349, it's one of my favorites, Turn Your Eyes Upon Jesus, would you please stand, we're going to sing through it twice. Thank you. 
that you heard God speak to you in some way, whether it's through the music, the message, or Holy Communion. I hope you know how much God loves you as you go from this place. Would you receive this benediction? Heavenly Father, may your grace go before us and your face shine upon us. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen.